Welcome! Let's learn Unga Bunga the Caveman Card Game, a 2-6 to six player game by Jesse Halushko, published by HKO Games. You begin the game as little more than an intelligent monkey. You will become an official caveman when you have invented your first tool. Once you become a caveman, your goal is to become the ultimate caveman by obtaining all of the six items. To set up, give each player one of each item card. These are used to help remind players how to make each item, as well as help them keep track of which items have been made. Next, take the regular Unga Bunga cards, shuffle them together, then deal five to each player. The oldest player will go first. On their turn, players must play at least one card from their hand, but if they are able to, they can play up to all five cards from their hand before play passes on to the next player. So on their turn, if a player is unable to do anything else, they can always discard one card. A player is also always able to send out a wild animal, which I will get to in a bit. At the start of a game, a player's first objective is to make a tool. Nothing else can be made unless a tool is made first. Once a tool has been made, players are free to make anything else in any order. And in order for a player to complete an item, they must have both cards in their hand before they are able to play them. Once one player has a tool, any other player who does not is able to discard four or five cards and then draw back up to five cards. Once a player has a tool, for the remainder of the game, they can discard one card, they can send out a wild animal, they can make one item, they can make one item and send out a wild animal, or they can make two items. And if they have a wild animal, they can choose to send that out. And if a player has the cards to make items that they already have, they may do so. They would just go into the discard pile and then draw back up to five cards. The main deck comes with many cards used to make items. We have the holdy stick, skinny stick, pointy stick, clubby stick, choppy stick, rolly stick, smashy rock, Rolly Rock, Sparky Rocks, Shiny Rock, Stringy Shells, Aruga, Bitey Cat, Growly Beast, Stompy Monster, and the wild card, Unga Bunga, which can be substituted for any of the other cards. It might be useful for you to know that each item has its own color. So we have Green Tool, Orange Fire, Yellow House, Blue Wheel, Pink Bunga Wife, and Red Clothes. And some cards have two colors because they can be used for two different things. And remember, the wild Unga Bunga cards can be used in place of any other card. Now let's go into making items. To make a tool, you need a smashy rock and a holdy stick. To make fire, you need sparky rocks and skinny sticks. To make a house, you need a choppy stick and a rolly stick. To make a wheel, you need a rolly rock and a rolly stick. As for the Bunga Wife, you can see that you have options. And as long as one of the sets is complete, the Bunga Wife is considered completed. As for clothes, you have even more options. So let's go into Wild Animals right now. If it comes to your turn and you haven't yet completed the clothes item, and you have what is needed to do so, you can simply take those cards from your hand and complete your clothes. But you can do a little bit more with Wild Animals than just that. One of your options with wild animals is at any point during the game, you can send a wild animal to an opposing player. The wild animals you can send after another player are the bitey cat, growly beast, and stompy monster. A bitey cat can be beaten by a clubby stick, a choppy stick, and a pointy stick. A growly beast can only be beaten by a choppy stick and a pointy stick. And a stompy monster can only be beaten by a pointy stick. And remember, an Unga Bunga card is a wild card for anything, including sending it out as a wild animal. And to help you remember which weapon defeats which animal, it is the same as the pairings needed for clothes. If the defending player is unable to defeat the wild animal, then the person who played it is able to look at that player's five card hand and take one of their cards and put it into their now five card hand, and that player must then draw back up to five cards. And don't forget to discard the wild animal. If a player is able to defeat a wild animal, but they do not yet have a tool, then those cards would then go into the discard pile and 
both players would draw back up to five cards. If a player is able to defeat the wild animal and they have a tool but no clothes, they can defeat the animal and use that for their clothes. And if a player is able to defeat an animal but they already have clothes, then those cards would go into discard and both players would draw back up to five cards. So at the end of their turn, no matter how many cards a player has, they will always draw back up to five cards. Near the end of the game, when a player has made five out of the six items they're able to make and have the possibility to make the final sixth one, they declare Ungabunga, and everyone else now takes their turn. Those players are able to continue making items but they may wish to send wild animals to that player for that player to fight off. If a player has declared Ungabunga, but they cannot make their final item on their turn, their declaration of Ungabunga becomes invalid, and they must wait at least one turn before they can declare Ungabunga again. So this player must now wait an entire turn before they can declare Ungabunga. If the player has successfully made it back to their turn and are still able to build the last item, they become the ultimate caveman. Thank you for joining me to learn Ungabunga the caveman card game. Have fun, and I invite you to join me next time as I do a playthrough.